everyone, Tori the Crafty Girl here, and recently I made a video uh, sharing my journey to making the viral Taylor Swift granny stitch dress that everyone is doing, and it, it was really fun to make. In fact, I was up at a cabin um, for vacation, and it was the perfect project to do during that time. On the drive home, which is 11 hours by the way, and we just drive straight through, I needed another project to do, so I had some leftover yarn, and I decided to make a little matching handbag. And uh, I included this in the video, and to my surprise, I had quite a few of you actually reach out to me and ask for the pattern. Um, well, I am not a crochet pattern maker. I love crochet, I do it as a hobby, I love showing you what I learn, um, but I just freestyled it. So, I did want to do a video because I did make a promise that I would show you what my process looked like. So I recreated another one that I'm going to show you in this video. And here is the additional version. Now I did things a little bit differently because I wasn't on the road. I wasn't limited to uh, um, the supplies I had on hand. So this one is a little more advanced and that's just because it has an additional row of opposite um, granny stitches here, but I'll show you what I did in the bag. This bag right here, probably this project, probably takes about three hours total, um, depending on your time you can spend on it and your experience level, but it is such a fun, quick project to do. And again, this is the vertical granny stitch. That is what's gonna make this one different. Um, I have always done horizontal granny stitches. So when you're making a top or when you're making, um, you know, pretty much anything you're sometimes you're going to do a granny stitch uh square like a granny square which is very common so many cool projects i've made with granny squares um but again you can use a granny stitch to make just like a tank top or anything like that uh but most of the time i've seen them horizontal so that's kind of i think what the big draw about this dress was is that it's vertical which does require different planning in this video i'm going to show you how to create this version but you can easily create a version like this just by changing your colors by uh you know creating a pattern whichever works for you this one I just you know kind of copied the same pattern that I was doing here but this one I just used some self-striping uh yarn and it did make it go a lot faster because I didn't have to change colors I didn't have a lot of yarn tails to weave in and so uh, you can use pretty much any yarn this is an acrylic again it's yarn that I already had on hand I didn't want to go uh spend more money because I'm trying to use up my collection of yarn before I buy any more um and I also really love how this one turned out. Now, a couple ways you can customize this. You can add a lining, especially for this type of handbag. It's super simple. Um, you would just essentially do a square or rectangle uh, the size of this and, uh, you know, call it a day. Uh, you could also just put a bag in a bag, and that's what I typically do. You know, I have my little zipper pouches that I, it's easier for me to take out a zipper pouch full of stuff and pop it into another bag than to have a bunch of loose things. Um, so that's typically what I do. You can also add fringe and make it more of a boho style you could add long so you could even right you can add long straps on here too to give it a crossbody um alternative so there's many ways you can customize this project to the way you want it to look um, but i am gonna do just a quick tutorial again thank you everybody for all of your likes and comments um and sharing of my last video and hopefully you will get some enjoyment out of this project as well so thanks for coming along and let's dive right in for this project, I used this Big Twist Anti-Pill Acrylic Yarn in Inclusivity. It didn't even need a full skein, so it's great for using up some of that yarn that you already have. And then I used this Prim Hook, which is an H hook, which is five millimeter. I will have uh, all my supplies tagged below as well. You'll also need some handles. You can find purse handles pretty much anywhere. These measure about six inches, and that is what this pattern is based on. So you'll start with a chain of 60, and then what you're gonna do is do a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. And that's gonna give you those three skip stitches are gonna act as the first double crochet. The second will be your second double crochet, and then you're going to do one more double crochet in the same stitch. That's gonna be your first granny stitch cluster, or granny cluster, however you wanna refer to it. Then for this round right here, we are going to continue to skip three stitches and then do another granny cluster in each one. And you're going to continue to do that all the way until you get to the end. 
When you get to the end of the row, you are just gonna end with one double crochet. Okay, that's gonna give us a chain space for the next round. Then you're going to chain three. That essentially will be the first double crochet of our next round. Now you're gonna do two additional double crochets in that chain space that's right there. And the pattern is so simple. You're just gonna repeat that same process of three double crochet in each chain space all the way to the end of the row. Now when you get to the end, it is gonna be a little bit different. There's not a chain space here, but you're gonna do that single double crochet in the top of the first chain three. So you can do that um, if your yarn is too tight, you can also go into the space between the two double crochet, uh, but it does look a lot cleaner if you go right through uh, on that top stitch there and then do that one double crochet. And then once again, you'll just chain three, turn your work, and then repeat the whole process until you have the link that you're looking for, which in this case is 22 rows. Now this next section is optional, but I think it adds a really nice finish to the ends. So once you have completed those 22 rows, when you get to the end of your work, you are going to chain three. This time, instead of turning your work and completing another vertical uh, section, we're actually going to go to the other side. So you're essentially just going to turn it, shift it in a clockwise motion, and we are going to continue creating some granny stitches. So there is going to be a chain space there. We've already done chain three, and now you're gonna do two additional double crochet. Then we're gonna continue the pattern along the side. So three double crochet in each of those chain spaces until you get to the end of the row, and then you will just have a single double crochet. Then you will chain one and turn your work, but before we get to the next step, let me show you how I measure where to put the handles. To measure where you're gonna put the handles, the way I do it is in this case for this particular pattern, I folded it in half and marked with my stitch marker and then counted out um, from that centerpiece nine stitches on each side. So it should be a total of 18. That worked out well for me, but play with it. Your, if your handles are a different size, really you can just adjust this whatever you think makes sense. But I did do nine stitches on the left and nine stitches on the right. And then I'm just going to slip stitch up to the first stitch marker. Uh, so that slip stitch really is just to create that finished look and to finish off the ends. We're gonna slip stitch at the other side as well. So you'll slip stitch all the way up to the stitch marker and then you are going to change to a single crochet. So you'll do a single crochet for 18 stitches. Remember, that's the length of our handle. That's what we wanna do. So we just single crochet for 18 stitches and then once you've done that, you'll slip stitch the remaining stitches in that row. And again, you'll repeat that same thing on the other side. So at the end of that round, you can cut and tie off the yarn tail. Just make sure to leave a long enough tail that you can use it to stitch up the sides and you'll do that on both sides. Now I'm gonna go in with a new uh, uh, strand of yarn and I'm going to create the little channels for our handles. Again, just to reiterate, you could do this part out of the project and then just come back and stitch it. But I do find this to be super simple. So I just added the additional yarn tail and then I am just gonna do single crochet starting again at the stitch marker. So 18 single crochet across the row. When you get to the end of the 18 single crochet, you are going to chain one, turn your work, and then you are going to stitch 18 single crochets across again. And so you're gonna go in there and just make sure you count. And I know, for me, my ADHD gets so out of control, it's hard to count with crochet, but just make sure you're counting each row 18 stitches. You wanna make sure that it is a nice, even square all the way. So you're gonna continue to do that for the width of your handles. For me, it took seven. So I could do seven rounds of single crochet after the initial setting up of the handle channels. Um, and that seven rows worked perfectly for me. 
to add the handles to the channels, all you do is you fold the little area inward and you're gonna stitch it to the inside. And I'm just using a whip stitch here. It worked so well for me, it goes so quickly. So I'm just picking up a loop on the bag itself and then I am going through the other side of the handle channel and I'm just doing that all the way down. And then also reinforcing both of the ends just to make sure it doesn't get loose or rip or anything like that. After you stitch both handles together, then you can hide your yarn tail right there within the handle channel. It's very convenient. So now there are a couple things you can do at this point. If you're gonna add a lining, this is a great time to do that because you can actually go right here and you could take a measure a piece of fabric and you could you know, stitch it to the inside with it open like this before finishing the ends. That may be a little bit easier, um, but it is completely up to you. The last step we need to do now is to stitch the sides together. So uh, I actually turn the bag so that I have the right sides facing uh, inside and that's just because I find it easier to flip it out. It gives it a little bit more shape to me. Um, but again, use your own preference, whichever works. And just like with the handles, I just did a simple whip stitch all the way down and then knotted it off and then hid the yarn tails in the side of the bag. Then turn your bag right side out and once you do that, your bag is done. Now you can customize it in many different ways, including adding fringe, adding a crossbody strap, whichever works for you. Hopefully you had fun making this project. If you do, don't forget to tag the Crafty Girl. I would love to see how you customize this and make it your own. And if you have any questions on the process that I did, feel free to reach out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, everybody, see ya!